Hi guys, welcome back. I am Tara T with Old Soul Factory and I know what you're thinking. It's been a while. There hasn't been a Tara T Tuesday in a couple weeks. Let me explain really quickly before we jump into the contents of this video, okay? So I have recently went back to my full-time job. My full-time job revolves around the school year. And so whenever the school year starts up, it gets crazy, hectic, and busy. And so I've been dealing with the stress of my full-time job kicking back into full force. So I've been trying to balance that and all of my crochet stuff at the same time, prep for markets. I've been working on patterns and all kinds of super fun things, which I cannot wait to tell you about at the end of this video for a little sneak peek about something I've been working on. But for today's video, I am going to be talking about everything I made with one skein of Burnett Perfect Phasing Yarn. So I have been talking about this in my previous videos. I cannot figure out what to use this yarn for, right? Because it it is perfect phasing and it's such a beautiful yarn. And I have so many different colorways of this yarn, but I just don't know what to make with it because it's such like a um, like unique pattern that it comes out to be. So like it's really hard to make animals that have a lot of arms or limbs and stuff unless you make them all in one piece because then if you make the ears first, but then you start from the feet up after you prep like the ears, then the ears are like super dark compared to the rest of the body and stuff. And I wanted everything to blend pretty much as seamlessly as possible when making stuff with this yarn so it doesn't necessarily look like it was a perfect phasing skein. So what I did was I did not use this one, but it's very similar. I used the deep teal and I used the whole stinking thing, every last little shred. And I had to use just a little bit of the outside of this color, which I'll talk about at the end um, to show you the last thing that I made. So I will go in order. I'm going to be talking about all of the patterns that I used as well. And I'll name all of those for you guys. That way you can also know what patterns I've been using or I've been making lately because it's also been a while since I've given you an update on some of the newer patterns that I found and I've been working on. So the first thing that I made, because it starts out with the deep color in the middle, obviously, um, was this Fred the Sea Turtle. Fred the Sea Turtle, I, me and my mom, Stacy Makes here on YouTube, have talked about this pattern so much. Okay, it is one of our favorite sea turtle patterns um, for the bigger turtles like this guy. Um, for the smaller ones, I'm still doing Tice the Sea Turtle as well, um, which is my pattern that you can find down below if you want to check that out. But this one, you do pre-make the fins ahead of time and then you, and the head, and then you sew them in as you go. So it's really easy to make that way, um, especially if you don't mind prepping the fins ahead of time. So this was the sea turtle. Obviously, only his shell is made with the um, perfect phasing skein that I was talking about. And the rest is actually um, the frosting color. And it turned out so cute. I, we've nicknamed him the winter turtle because he's very like snow-like with the deep blue. He's so cute. And these opal eyes are just absolutely gorgeous. So um, I loved making this guy. Again, CJ, CJ Designs, um, they have a free blog post that has the tutorial on how to make this turtle. The only thing I typically change was whenever I make the shell, instead of doing six in the magic ring, I just go ahead and do 12. Otherwise they come out pretty coney for me with my tension and everything. So I do fix that. And then I do also pin up the head. So it's a little less floppy at the end as well. So that's the only thing I change as far as the pattern goes. But yeah, he is so cute. He was the first thing that I made with this skein. The second thing I made was this cute little froggy. How adorable. This was actually a free pattern that I got off of Instagram. It is by my underscore universe 64 on Instagram. And it's just this cute little pocket frog. It's just a little no so frog. I think I might go back and put a mouth on him. I have not done that yet, but I think he needs a little mouth, but his little, the way his little feet are just like right there. It's so stinking cute. I think he'll be the perfect addition to my little $5 bin as well since he was so quick and easy to make. I thought about making a whole bunch of them and like just running through the whole skein with all of these because I also saw the ADHD hobbyist on Instagram trying out this pattern. And so I really wanted to just like market prep a bunch of these guys. But again, I was trying to see how many different items I could find as well for the future for my other perfect phasing skeins. So he was the second little item that we made. 
The next item that I made was this adorable crab. I had not tried this pattern yet. Um, this was a new pattern for me. Again, this is the only other pattern other than the turtle that I used a little bit of that frosting um, just for the underside of the belly. But yeah, he turned out very cute. I think I like him. I don't think he's my favorite thing. I think it's because he looks kind of mean the way his eyes are inset. I think it kind of scares me just a little bit. <laughs> but this is Carlton the Crab. It is by Katie's Cute Crochet and that's K-A-T-Y on Instagram. And it is again, a free pattern. And I really like the way that they did the, um, they did the little legs and stuff. I think that might, next time I go to do it, I might color change and do it in those rows since I know where it goes now. Um, but otherwise you like surface crochet on the front too, and then you do the back all with one piece. So you do have to surface crochet four separate times for this pattern, um, but it didn't take long at all. I just, it's not my favorite pattern. And again, I think it's cause he looks bad, <laughs> but he is kind of cute like that. The next thing I made, which again, I still need to finish this and I realize that now that I'm sitting here, was um, a club crochet. I did a little triceratops. Um, if you've been here from the beginning, this used to be one of like the very, very, very first patterns that I started making when I learned how to crochet. And these guys are so cute and they only take about 30 minutes to make, especially now that I have it memorized and every once in a while I'll lock in and like make several of these within like the same week or two. I basically have the pattern memorized once I pull it back up and run through it once more. Um, but I do like to, you're supposed to pre-make the horns and then tie them on the inside um, to like the head once you get right past the frills row. And so instead I like to go back and just surface crochet them on. That way I know that they're on there a little bit tighter and a little bit better. Um, but it's really up to you. That's just my personal preference. I feel like it saves me time. So I'm not having to like tie off everything on the inside as I'm going. And I can just get through it faster. So I will go back and I will put the little horns on this guy, but he's so cute. You can finally tell on this one that the color is starting to change a little bit from like the front where you start to the back finally. And I think that's so cute how you can kind of see it changing just a little bit. And especially like compared to Fred, it's definitely already changed, but you couldn't even tell unless you like literally hold them up next to each other because it perfectly, perfectly phases. I mean, I know that that's what it's called, but it's so perfect this way. So the next thing I made was one of my own patterns again. This is Splash the Great White Shark. He's also available on my Etsy as well. He is, I think, the most phased thing that I made. He definitely starts out darker blue at the beginning, as you can see, and goes to this perfect, like, lighter blue, almost periwinkly kind of color. Um, again, I was trying to find patterns that you work from, like, one end to the other to help blend them all. And this is a perfect pattern from that since it's all one piece. The only thing you have to go back and crochet on is you have to surface crochet on like the top fins. Same thing with my swordfish pattern in that um, pattern pack and bubbles, the whale shark as well. You do have to go back and do the very top fin, which does not take long. Um, so, but the color is really not that far off since it's a small pattern. So it turned out perfectly for this guy and his little blush just pops so well on this blue. I just love him so much. So that is the fifth thing I made with that skein. The sixth thing I made was this little guy. This is by Pink Blue Period Crochet and Crochet by Gina on Instagram. I've talked about this pattern way long ago and I was like, oh yeah, I was scrolling through like my free pattern saved on Instagram and I was like, I remember when I used to make that pattern. So I decided that this like color that I had stopped at would be the perfect little color for like a little baby squid. So this is Ella the mini squid. It's a cute, quick, super easy pattern. You make the squid, um, then you surface crochet the tentacles and the little like top fin, I guess is what you could call it. Um, so it doesn't take very long at all. And it's so cute. It's so tiny. I'm just, I needed some more small items as well um, to help fill in my $5 and my $8 bin. So this will be a perfect addition to my $5 bin. The next thing I made was another club crochet triceratop. Again, this pattern's so quick and easy and it's so cute. And I just love this specific color of blue from the skein. It's just so cutesy. Something about like this light baby blue is just so adorable to me. And I had 
like a similar color, but it wasn't the same color from Bernat. Um, but I wish I could get like a skein of literally this color. And if you have a color from Bernat that is like this color, please let me know, okay? Because I definitely need to be ordering it because it is perfect for these kind of animals, both for sea creatures, for dinosaurs, and more of the boyish items. I think this color would be perfect for that. So I'm definitely going to try to keep my eye out. If they do have one or have already released it, I'm just unaware of it. Please let me know. But I do need to go back and put the little horns on this guy, but that won't take long at all. So this was the, la the next item I made. And then last but not least, I got to like towards the end of my skein and I was like, man, this is taking forever because I picked, I feel like a lot of smaller items. Um, and so I was like, I need to make like at least one big thing out of this skein, right? So I decided to make a hooks and nooks teddy bear. I have talked about this pattern in a previous video as well. when I talked about like five patterns that you should try. Um, but we made this guy. This guy is so stinking cute. And like I said, I wanted to try to find patterns that you could work from like top to bottom and they would phase pretty like evenly. And you do have to make the arms first and then you work from the legs up. So you can tell I did the arms first and then I did this leg and I can, it bothers me because I can tell, okay? Because I work with color correction and stuff all day at my job. Like I'm trained to see color. So I can tell that this leg a little bit darker than this one. So I did this arm, this arm, and then I did this. And then I started on this side and then you connect them and go up. Yes, there's also like one random like darker dye spot like right there. I'm sad to say it's on the front as well and I can't hide it. So it's just there as well. But um, instead on the last time I did this pattern, I did the patchy mod for it, like the scrap yarn bear mod for it. Um, so I used different colors for arms and legs and it had a patch over one of its eyes and a little X instead of like the two eyes. But I decided to do the pattern as is and this is how he turned out and he's so adorable i feel like this would be like such a cute little like little toddler little boy gift and like i said i was just trying to find some more like boyish things and a bigger thing to make so this was the perfect pattern for this and then the little coral nose is just so perfect on this color so yeah that was the last thing i made with this skein and like i said i made all of this with one skein um brand new too i hadn't used it on anything else the only thing was is like the last like three rows on the top of the head i was getting to the end and i was like i'm going to run out and there's no way that if i switch to white or another color of blue that it's gonna match right so i luckily had this skein of yarn and i took the wrapper off and i went from the outside of this skein um where it's also very light blue and it matched perfectly like I can't even tell where I tied it off at because it matches so perfectly and you cannot tell literally at all so luckily I got lucky there and I just had to use like I said it was like the last two or three rows I'm like I can get this done and then I did the ears as well I guess in the other skein so just a little bit of help with another skein just a tiny bit I promise if I would have just skipped Ella the squid I probably would have had enough to do it all but I did not calculate properly okay and that's on me <laughs> so again we had Fred the sea turtle and then we had the crab and then we had the little frog and then we had the triceratops oh let's see if I can stack all of these and then we had the shark and then we had Ella the squid and then we had the Triceratops, the other Triceratops. Oh my goodness. And then we had the Big Bear. <laughs> and this is everything we made with one skein of yarn. I think that this challenge really made me realize how much you can make with one skein. I think I'm really bad about getting out like a color and only making one thing with it and then putting it away and getting another color out completely. And then like oftentimes forgetting about those colors that I have that I think are really pretty when I buy them, but then I only buy them for one certain project. And once that project's over, they just kind of get left behind. And so I'm trying to be better about when I get a color out to make like two or three things with it to help me market prep a little bit better and just help me prepare for markets because I need more inventory at all times. And I have so many markets coming up this fall, so we gotta get it locked in, okay? <laughs> the other big project I've been having go on for quite a while now, I know I've teased it over my Discord server for my Sparkle members, 
Um, if you sign up to be a Sparkle member your, and your account is linked to your Discord, then you automatically get enrolled into my Discord for Old Soul Factory. So you can go ahead and go check that out if you're interested in that. But I have been teasing this for a while now and I'm so happy that I think I finally have it all ironed out and ready to release in the next week or so for you guys, depending on when you see this video. But I have some big news for Tice the Sea Turtle. We actually have some mods that are going to be coming out on my Instagram. We're going to have a strawberry mod, of course. Once I had my strawberry festival and I had made several of these little guys, I had several people asking me how I did the little floof on the top. So we have this. We're going to have an orange. We're going to have a lemon. We're going to have, let's see if I can also hold all of these. We're going to have a pineapple. I think the pineapple's really cute. We're gonna have a watermelon. We're gonna have a blueberry. And then we're also gonna have a cute little kiwi. Ah! So I am going to be releasing these as a free mod pack on Instagram. I will also have them in my Etsy at a later date for like a dollar or something like that. That way you can add it to your cart. That way you can have the PDF of all of these in one place. That way you can keep them with your pattern and make sure you've got them available at all times. But yes, we will be releasing the fruit pack for Tice the Sea Turtle. They're just some quick and easy little mods for you guys. That way you can turn them into your own cute little fruits. And I love each and every one of them. And I am so excited that I get to share these with you guys very, very soon. And so if you're not following me over on Instagram, go check me out. It's Old Soul Factory Crochet over on Instagram. And I cannot wait to share them with you. And please, if you make them or you make any of my patterns, please feel free to tag me as well on all socials. I love seeing your guys' creations and commenting and making sure that I get to appreciate them because it's so cute when everybody else starts to make my patterns. It's just so much fun to see all of the fun ideas and color combos that you guys have for my patterns. It is so cute. So yeah, I will be pretty busy over the next couple weeks again still and work's been better. So I've just been trying to balance all of that on top of everything else. So with all of that being said, I know it's been a while, but thank you guys so much for coming back or welcome in if you guys are new here. Again, my name is Tara T and if you need me, you guys know where to find me, okay? Alrighty, bye! <laughs>